What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show a quick demonstration and quick start tutorial on how you can use our new add-on for Blender, Horde. Horde is an add-on we have released on Blender Market. It is a set of crowd system tools with various genres of characters attached to those systems. For this add-on, we utilize geometry nodes as well as Blender's inbuilt void systems to create customizable crowd systems quickly inside of Blender. This add-on is very intuitive once you get the hang of a few basic principles, so that's what I'll be going through in this short introductory video. And as you can see on the Blender Market page here, there's a little demonstration of what you can do with this add-on. Essentially, by unleashing the power of these geometry node systems that we have created for the add-on, you'll be able to create runners, walkers, or idling crowds of characters very quickly inside of Blender and we have four sets of different genres of characters attached to these systems so far. As you can see, we have both human and zombie collections, and within these two main categories, we have two different subcategories for each. Without further ado, let's get started. First and foremost, I'd like to thank our collaborators on this project, Carlos Barreto on the development side and Elliot Faze for creating the 3D characters within this add-on. I'll put a link to their pages in the description below so you can show them some support if you'd like as well. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. Just so there's no confusion, I do want to show really quickly how to install Horde. When you download Horde off of Blender Market, it will come in the form of this install file called Horde version 1 install file or whatever version we have currently released at that time. So this is the install file for the add-on. You don't need to unzip it at all. Just keep it as a zip folder and inside of Blender, what you're going to want to do is go to edit preferences then blender preferences will come up you'll need to go to your add-on tab here and then click on the install button and now under install you'll need to find that folder where you have saved that install zip file and you can see i've found it right here horde v1 underscore install file we'll go ahead and select it and then i'll click on install add-on and it should pop up here however if it doesn't you can just go to your search bar and type in horde and you'll see it pops up. You just need to select the checkbox to enable it. And we'll go ahead and close our Blender preferences. And now if we go to this right window here, at the very bottom, we'll find our Horde tab and we have all of our different crowd systems available to us. So as you can see here, we have four main genres and then within these genres, we have different types of crowd systems. These are the four different genres we have so far. We do plan on expanding them in the future, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to use the zombies clothes version and we're just going to maybe use the runners. So depending on which version of these you choose, a different type of geometry node setup will come into your scene that you can then adjust and customize. So I'll go ahead and select on our runners here. And now we can select the type of system that we want to add where you can choose between void or geometry nodes. Now I do recommend using the geometry node version because you'll have much more customizability and sometimes voids inside of Blender can be a little bit tricky. So we'll go ahead and select on geometry nodes. This is likely going to give you the best results right off the bat. And now we'll click on add geometry node system and right off the bat you'll be prompted into edit mode and now what we're going to do is we're going to draw where we want this crowd system to be and I do recommend you have surface selected here but you can also have cursor selected uh, this is just going to change where your NURBS path is being drawn so you can experiment with either of these but um, I'm going to just keep it on surface for now and I'm just going to draw a geometry node system and now you can see it'll automatically bring us back into object mode and we have sort of a very basic crowd setup. Now, obviously this is not what we want right off the bat, but adjusting this and getting something desirable is pretty quick. So go ahead and select it here and I'll click on sync parameters. And once we do that, we'll have the ability to adjust all the primary settings for this crowd system. Now these are the primary settings. However, if you want to go deeper into the geometry node system, you can just go to the modifier tab here and adjust a variety of these settings as well. So right off the bat, you can see we can control our population, our character speed, our character offset, our character spread, our randomized path, and our noise scale. So let's get into what some of these do, and I'll show some examples. So first of all, population is pretty self-explanatory, how many characters you have in your geometry node crowd system. So pretty simple there. The main one you want to adjust first is the randomized path, because as you can see here, we're just getting one main path for all of our characters here, which doesn't really make sense if we're having a crowd of people running. So I'll go ahead and just increase our randomized paths and you'll see right off the bat, now we're getting something that might be a little bit more organic for a runner system. Now, one thing I'm noticing in this specific example is that our paths are a little bit too distorted here at the very end of our system. So what I might do is just select our path, 
and then go into edit mode and then I will adjust our actual NURBS path from here. And as you can see here, if I just move around our NURBS path, we can all of a sudden get a much nicer looking result for this crowd system. And we'll go back into object mode. And now if we play through our scene, each of these characters is running along its own path. Now I think their speed is a little bit too slow for runners. You can see they're kind of slipping here. So we'll just increase the speed to maybe three. And now we have a system that is much quicker. And then we can also offset our characters a bit so they start a little bit further. Then we can change the character spread as well to kind of vary their spacing a bit. And now if we play through our scene, we have something like this. And right off the bat, you can see that we're getting a pretty interesting looking runner crowd system. And from here, we can of course change the noise scale on our geometry node system, which kind of randomizes the paths of our characters. And depending on your scene, you may want to just check the visualize paths option here, just so you can see each individual character's paths a little bit nicer. So this is just a matter of personal preference. It doesn't change how your characters are rendered. It's just another viewing option if you want to adjust your individual character paths. So this is looking pretty cool here. Obviously we can increase the population of our horde. Now one thing you might notice in this specific instance is that some of our characters right next to each other are the exact same instance. Now there are a total of six characters being instanced across this crowd system, so you may see some characters repeating. However, what you can do in order to minimize this for your various shots is you can go to your modifiers tab and randomize the characters a bit with this option. So as you can see here, if I just scroll through, we can try to find the best example of character instance variation for your specific crowd system. I'll go ahead and just bring our population down here a bit for the sake of clarity here so we can see the paths a bit better. And there are two more things I wanna show you with this basic runner system. The first one being our snap to ground function here. The reason we have this here is just in case you have some geometry in your scene that you want your characters to reside in as they're running through space. What you can do actually, I'll just add a cube here for this example, make some sort of surface for the sake of the tutorial. So let's say you want this to be a street your characters are running down. What you can do is actually select your geometry node system. Then you can use the eyedrop tool to select the object you'd like your characters to snap to. And then you can select the snap to ground option. And now as you can see here, our characters are running along their respective pathways, but are staying on the ground here. And even if we move our geometry node setup, we can adjust it and they'll still run along this cube. So this is a nice way you can sort of constrain your characters to some geometry you have constructed in your scene. Now finally, you're probably wondering what this float curve is going to do to our crowd system here. And in my opinion, this is one of the coolest controls that we have added to the crowd system. One thing you might notice for our character pathways is that the character pathways sort of start at one point and then they are distributed outward. And this can create a really cool effect. However, the reason we've added these float controls here is so you can actually adjust how far our character paths are from each other along the length of the curve. So for example, if we bring this guy up, you'll notice that all of a sudden at the start of our character pathway, they're getting much further apart. So we can actually play around with this here to create some interesting pathways for our characters and have a lot more control over how they move. So for example, say they're running to one specific place, we can actually constrain the pathway at the end of the curve. We can actually invert everything and maybe go into edit mode here, kind of bring this out a bit so it's a little bit more prevalent. But you can see we're literally doing the inverse of what was originally our character pathways. So this is just one more way you can very precisely control how your characters are moving. If they were perhaps running through a very tight corridor, you could perhaps make the ends very large here, and then in the middle, we can constrain them. So this is just one more way you can control your characters and get some interesting looking results. And yeah, these are the main controls that you'll wanna play with for both the running and walking systems. One more cool thing I wanna show you guys, uh, this is just kind of a fun demonstration of how you can draw these paths and create some unique results. You can just go into edit mode and perhaps you just wanna start over and have a little creative fun with drawing pathways of runners onto your scene. We can just delete our entire curve here and with our same settings and NURBS path selected, we can just go here to draw and we can literally just draw 
where we want our characters to be. So this is just a really fun way you can create some crowd systems very quickly and have a lot of fun with the process. And now you have three different segments here that are all controlled by the same geometry node. And you can have a lot of fun with this and create some really interesting results for your crowd systems and really visualize where each character is going to go. So anyways, guys, those are the basic settings for the runner and walker systems. Um, one more thing, I just might uh, go into rendered view really quick here. I should mention that um, the characters are fairly detailed and you can render them in both EV and Cycles inside of Blender. And Elliot did a really good job texturing and creating the materials for these characters. However, you can see that if we get really close to the actual characters, they aren't really hero assets. We really wanted to optimize this add-on for those crowds in the distance of your 3D scenes or even live action visual effect shots. So they're not really designed for close-up renders. They're really optimized to be either in the background or in the mid-ground of your shot. So you can see here we're rendering this in Eevee and you can see it looks pretty good here. I'll go back into solid view and now I want to show you guys how you can add some idling crowd systems to your scene and some of those controls as well. So go ahead and delete these guys and for our idling crowd I'm actually going to switch it up a bit. I'll use our humans swim collection and we'll go ahead and find our idling characters and again we'll just draw in our system. And right off the bat you'll notice that we have something a little bit different from our runner or walker system. And that's because this system is designed to add static characters to your scene. So if we go ahead and sync these parameters, again, we have our main settings in our horde panel here. So this is another sort of different system that you can play around with in order to create static crowds in the background. And this is a much more basic system here, but you can see how this could be useful for adding some distant static crowds to pretty much any 3D scene or live action visual effect shots. So for this specific instance where we're using our humans swim idle collection, we could literally just go into edit mode here. Say we have some kind of live action shot where we've recreated the geometry around a beach scene, for example. We can literally just go in here and and perhaps just draw where we want our characters added to the scene. And of course we can snap these characters onto surfaces as well using our populate on target option. But you can see we can just play through our scene and our characters are animated and ready to go. Some of them are waving, some of them are looking around. And if we render these crowds off in the distance, you can see how this could be useful for adding a little bit of static life to your scenes. So uh, again, we can play around with lots of different settings here, uh, really create a huge crowd of people. Obviously this is a little bit too dense, bring it down a little bit here, but you can see how this would be pretty fun to just add some static crowds to your scenes fairly quickly. So this is our static crowd system and the same static sort of grid geometry node system will be for the idling zombies as well as the humans professional category. So anyways, finally to finish off this video, I'll go ahead and just delete our system here. I wanted to show you guys really quickly how to use the Boyd system. Now the Boyd system is kind of a secondary system we added, but it is useful in certain instances when you want to create sort of an organic particle system for your crowd. So in this instance, I'll just use, uh, we'll go with our humans professional collection and we'll choose the runners once again. And to use this Boyd system, we'll just select the Boyd option and add the Boyd system to the scene. And now right off the bat, you'll see we have a Boyd particle emitter here as well well as a Boyd goal for these particles. And we'll select our Boyd particle emitter and sync it here. And now we have a variety of different settings for this Boyd particle system that we can also access in the particle properties tab here. So these are the main settings you'll want to adjust. And then when you finally decide upon your settings, you can go into the cache tab and bake your particle system. So this is sort of similar to our SpiderFi add-on for Blender, where we have the birds and locusts and a bunch of different creatures that you can add to your scene with that add-on. This is a little bit more similar to that, except with the humans here. So you can see if we just play through our scene, our characters come to the ground here and they're acting as individual particles that go toward our goal here. So they're moving a little bit too slowly and I'll go ahead and increase our land speed here to five just so the Boyd particles move a little bit faster. You can see here now our characters are following 
our void goal. So this is just one more way that you can create crowds of characters. And again, you can kind of play around with the different number of particles and such. And of course you can animate this goal object as well in order to get different results of your characters moving around in your scene. And then finally, once you're happy with the way they're moving, then you can bake this data and then you can render it out for your scene. So that is the void option that we also have available for all of these different collections. And yeah, that is it for this intro video for the Horde add-on for Blender. I hope you guys enjoy this add-on. Let us know in the comment section below what kind of collections of characters you'd like added to it in the future. As usual, for all of our add-ons, the updates for this one will be free as well on Blender Market once you purchase it. So let us know in the comment section below what kind of updates you guys would like. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below as well. And I'll see you next time.